welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. Today's video is going to be all about sensory play. So if you're new here, you may not know, but my name is Jess and I have a one-year-old baby girl. She is almost 14 months old and because we've been home here for quite some time, I have really been trying to do a lot of fun learning activities with her here at home just to make sure that I'm stimulating her brain development and just helping her learn and grow and develop in any way that I possibly can. Can. Even though I am a stay-at-home mama now, I do have a couple of different degrees in early childhood education. I have a bachelor's degree in early childhood and then I also have my master's in curriculum and instruction. I am a former elementary school teacher and I know the benefits of sensory play for young children and how critical those early years are for brain development. So I wanted to go ahead and do some of those activities with my little one. Even though she is only a year old, it is never too early to really start these kinds of activities. So I would say probably starting, I guess, around six months old and up, you can start doing some of these activities with your little ones at home. So if you are a mama or if you are a nanny and work with young children, or if you are just looking for some activities to do with your nieces or nephews or just your grandchildren when you are able to see them again, then I hope you find this video helpful. I hope that it gives you some ideas of learning activities that you can do with babies or toddlers. Now do keep in mind that I have a very young toddler. So if you have some older toddlers or on the flip side if you have younger babies than my 14 month old you can adapt or modify any of these activities that I will be sharing with you today that's what I love about sensory play though is that you can be as creative as you want a lot of these activities are very simple so if you think that this is gonna be something that is just way out there don't worry mama, I've got you. I know that sometimes these kinds of things can be intimidating if you don't have experience with them or if you're trying to come up with something from scratch. So again, I have tons of activity ideas for you for both babies and young toddlers. And like I said, you can always modify or change things up to fit your child's needs. So if you are new here and you're not yet subscribed to my channel and you enjoy videos like this, please click that red subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful or enjoyable. That really does help me out. I would love to have you be part of the family here. I make all different types of videos on motherhood, home and lifestyle. We do day in the life vlogs. We do all kinds of fun things here on my channel and we have an amazing community of people. So I would love to have you stick around. So please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. All right, so before we dive into my sensory play activities, I really wanted to touch on what sensory play is and why it's important. So why are we even doing these activities with our little ones? Why not just let them play with the toys that we buy from the store, right? So first and foremost, sensory play is simply learning about the world through our senses. So being able to explore and learn and discover, investigate things, problem solve, all of those things using our senses. So through seeing new things, through feeling different textures, through smelling new scents. All of those things help all of us as humans learn about the world around us and learn about our environment. However, young children in particular really benefit from this because their brains are just growing. They're like little sponges and they are absorbing every single thing in their environment all the time. Things that you don't even realize. Those first few years are so critical and the more that they are exposed to and the more sensory experiences that they have, the more benefits that they will receive. Sensory play is important for overall development, but specifically for a young child's brain development. As they are working with these different materials and smelling different things and hearing different sounds, their brains are actually building nerve connections. And it only makes sense that the more experiences that they have, the more nerve connections that they will build. Another huge one is language development. So that is something that Eliana, my little one, and I have really been working on with all of these activities. No matter how simple the activity is, it gives you an opportunity as the parent to help your baby or toddler hear new language or just new vocabulary words. So for example, if you are playing with cotton balls, you could talk about the texture of the cotton balls. The cotton balls are squishy, they feel fluffy or fuzzy, those kinds of things. Those are all new vocabulary words that your child is hearing. And even though they may not understand what exactly that means, they are being exposed to new language all the time. So it just gives you that opportunity that you may not otherwise have without those sensory experiences. They also begin to pick up on certain types of skills, cause and effect, 
the effects of gravity. So for example, if you have them pour one cup of water into another cup of water, they will be able to see that the water flows downward from one cup to the other cup. We do a lot of scoop and pour activities here at home as well, and that's the same concept. So my little one now knows that if she scoops something with her spoon or a cup or anything, and she pours it this way, it will fall down into whatever container she has below. So there are so many different skills that they can learn. That is just one example. They also learn problem solving skills and critical thinking. Another big one is motor skills. So we have done so many different fine motor skill activities. Now, like I said, my little one is a young toddler, so she's not quite to the point where we can start using things to pinch or grasp with tools yet, which we will get there eventually, but we are just focusing on pinching with her fingers or grasping with her hands. All of those help with fine motor growth and development. So we have been working on those a lot. Your child can also learn gross motor skills through sensory play. If you guys take a family hike in the woods and your child is leaping over tree roots or, you know, just anything, we haven't done that in particular, but just throwing it out there, that sensory play is not just for fine motor skills, it can also be for gross motor skills as well. It is also very calming. So if you have a child who may be a little bit more sensitive to certain sensory experiences, then these actually are a great thing to do with them. Of course, use your judgment because all kids respond differently to different items and materials, but sensory bottles where they can look at the glitter slowly flowing through the water, those are perfect for calming down a child who is upset or angry or is just more sensitive to loud noises or just anything sensory related. So for example, as a former teacher, I have had several children with autism in my classrooms and I used sensory experiences that were calming for those children because a lot of times our classroom was loud. We were, you know, having fun. Kids were saying things all together all the time and reading and, you know, just Kids are loud, right, for the most part. So sometimes that can become a lot. So if you have a child who is a little bit more sensitive, then try out some of these activities because I do think that some of them will help to calm or relax your child. And then one of my favorite things about sensory play is the fact that it is open-ended. So you may present an activity to your child and say, okay, this is what this activity is meant for. However, Sensory play is open-ended, which means your child is able to use their creativity and their imagination to play with it as they wish. So there have been so many activities that we have done here at home that she didn't even use it how I thought she would use it. And you'll see that here in a little bit. For example, we were gonna do a color sorting activity with Fruit Loops. And you guessed it, she ate them all instead. <laughs> Not all of them, but you know what I mean. She just wanted to eat them, didn't want anything to do with the color activity. However, taste is also a sensory experience. And even though I do not feed her sugary cereals, it was just something that I was like, okay, you know what? She's exploring and learning about this this material, this new food, and so that was fine. But it's funny how that works, and they are able to learn and explore and discover in those ways because the activities are open-ended. So my tip for you would be to allow them to do that. Of course, I didn't let her eat all of the Fruit Loops, but it is important to kind of give them that freedom a little bit to investigate things on their own. Because again, those nerve connections are forming. All right, so I could go on and on about the benefits of sensory play, but I wanted to share those with you because I feel like it's important that you guys know that, especially as parents, because sometimes it's like, eh, I'm not going to put in the effort to do, you know, A, B, C. I'll just give them a toy here at home, which those are fine too, but it is fun to incorporate some of these things and it is very beneficial for your little ones. So again, I hope you guys enjoy. Again, I do want to say that these are just ideas. Feel free to modify as you feel fit for you and your children. Some of these activities are very simple and then some of them are more complex. Some of them do get pretty messy, but that's all in the fun of it. And none of them have been so messy to the point where it has been overwhelming or anything. You can use all different kinds of materials that you have just laying around your home. Don't feel like you have to get all fancy with it. But I do wanna say, be careful of choking hazards. So if your little one is someone who likes to put everything in his or her mouth, then be very careful and make sure you are monitoring. Again, choose what is 
best for your child and your family and what you believe to be safe for your little one. I am sharing ideas that work for my little one. Luckily, she doesn't put many things in her mouth. So we are pretty lucky in that respect. But if you do have a little one that tends to put things in their mouth, either make sure that it is a food item that you guys are playing with that they can eat and that's okay to be ingested if they do put it in their mouth. Or you may just choose to sit there and monitor or just use something completely different. It's totally up to you. Have fun with it, be creative, and let's go ahead and dive in to our sensory play activities. So this first activity is one that is super simple. It is just a rice sensory bin. So rice you can find for very cheap. This was only around a dollar and we used some farm animals that we already had here at home. But you can use letters of the alphabet or any other materials or figurines that your child already has. We just dumped this bag of rice into a bin and then as you can see, she is enjoying scooping into another container. This kept her busy for days on end you guys she loved this activity so much and it was something that was very simple and it did get a little bit messy but it didn't take long to clean up also if you don't have any rice on hand you can always use other food materials like oats beans or even popcorn kernels this next activity was also very simple. It was just a jello dig. So I bought a box of jello. I do recommend using a color other than red because it did stain her skin just a little bit until bath time. It did come off in the bath, but if you have a different color option, I would choose that instead of red. I just made the jello according to the package instructions. And before I put it in the refrigerator to harden up, I put some of her plastic toys in it to kind of solidify in the jello. Once that was done, she was able to have fun and dig them out and just squish the jello and play. For those of you that have younger babies, this would be a great activity for them. Next is rainbow or colored spaghetti. So this was actually very easy to make and the texture of it is something so unique for little one's hands. My sweet girl did not love this one because she doesn't really like sticky or slimy things, but all I did was cook up some spaghetti. I did coat it in some olive oil and then I individually colored each little mini batch of spaghetti noodles in a Ziploc bag with some food coloring and let that sit out on a paper towel to dry for about an hour. You want to let it dry otherwise the food coloring will come off onto your skin and so you don't want that to happen to your little one so go ahead and let this dry once it's dried for about an hour it will still feel squishy like squishy spaghetti but they will be able to play with it without getting the food coloring all over their hands Next, we played with some Fruit Loops and tried to do some color sorting, but I told you guys earlier, this was one of those activities that my little one just did kind of her own thing with and decided to eat them instead, which like I said, taste is one of our five senses, but I just pulled out a vegetable tray and you can do color sorting with all kinds of materials, not just Fruit Loops. A lot of small children love to play in the water, whether it's by itself in a little swimming pool or if it's with something like water beads. I just ordered these off of Amazon. Now these are a choking hazard if your little one puts things in their mouth, so just be very careful with these, but this is a fun activity. Then we also tried some colored bubbles. So this was such a fun activity, you guys. We used three different colors. So I used a fourth of a cup of water for each color, as well as one tablespoon of dish soap. Then I just added a little bit of food coloring and blended it with an electric mixer, and then put all three colors in a tub for her to play with outside. Now I will say I just used the food coloring that we already had here at home, and it did tend to stain her skin a little bit. However, 
However, I wanted to share a hack with you guys. If for some reason your food coloring stains your little one's skin on their hands, on their legs, just anywhere, you can use baby oil or olive oil. We used olive oil because that's what we had here at home to get that gently off of their skin. So unfortunately, the bath did not take the food coloring off of her skin completely. So all we did was rub a little bit of olive oil on the bottoms of her feet and on her hands and let that soak for a couple of minutes. And then when we gave her her next bath, it did come off. So that definitely helped. But you guys, this kept her entertained for almost an hour. She loved this activity. It was slippery and slimy and foamy and the colors were just beautiful. It did get pretty messy. So I definitely suggest doing this outside over a towel or something that you don't mind getting messed up because it is a messy activity. But you can see I just put her in her swimsuit and let her go to town. So when you think about playing with water, you can also think about playing with ice. So we did some ice painting, and again, I just used some materials that I had here at home, a very cheap ice tray that I had from the dollar store, some popsicle sticks, and some food coloring. So all I did was dye some water with the food gel, and then I poured it into the ice tray to let it harden into some ice cubes. And I will show you guys here in just a moment a little hack that I have for you to keep the popsicle sticks from falling over. So I have to give credit to my sweet hubby for this next hack. He said to use Glad Press and Seal Wrap or whatever Glad Wrap you have at home to keep the popsicle sticks from falling over while they are in the ice tray hardening. So genius, thank you hubby. <laughs> I hope it helps you guys. So all I did was put a piece of this Glad Press and Seal Wrap over the ice tray, and then I took a knife and cut little holes inside each of the little compartments and popped in half of a popsicle stick that I cut in half into each ice cube. So as you can see, I ended up using the jumbo popsicle sticks cut in half because I felt like my little one's hands would be able to grasp those a little bit easier since they were bigger than original size popsicle sticks. So you just pop those in the freezer and once they are done, they are ready to paint with. Now, I will say my sweet girl just wanted to try out every single color. <laughs> I tried to model for her how to paint with the ice and she did a little bit, but then she just continued to eat them like popsicles. But again, it is all about using all of the senses, right? Next up is a garden sensory bin. So this is very simple. It is just soil and some plastic vegetables that I ordered from Amazon. And I will leave as many links as I can down below, but you could use gardening tools. You could use flowers and flower pots. This is something that you can just be as creative as you would like with. But my little one loved practicing scooping and digging. And as you can see, she might be a lefty. That's something that we've been noticing recently, but she loves this one. We still have it set out on our back porch right now. Next up, I have this bin full of different textures. So we have some cotton balls, some feathers, and some different types of ribbons. And I just used, again, things that I found around our home for her to explore with. You can tickle their legs or their arms or their toes just to give them sensory experiences in different places as well. Next is sand play. So we have a sandbox here at home, but you definitely don't have to have a sandbox. This could be out in your backyard or you could use kinetic sand. Just use anything that you have that's convenient. You could put sand in a bin. Anything like that is great for sensory play. A 
Another activity that is great for kids of all ages is sensory bottles. So here I have a couple of sensory bottles that I made here at home. And today for my sensory bottles, I used lukewarm water mixed with clear glue. When you have warmer water, it actually mixes with the glue a little bit better. I just added some food coloring and some glitter. And then for my rainbow one, which you'll see here in just a moment, I just used the water beads and layered them by color to make it look like a rainbow. So very easy, very simple, but you can be as creative as you want to with sensory bottles and that is what I love about them. You can add little figurines to create different scenes or themes. You can add sequins. You can even make dry sensory bottles with rice or beans. Honestly, you can put whatever you want to in here and each bottle is going to be different and unique and that is what makes them so cool and so satisfying. These are great for calming your children down as well if you need something to help relax them and just keep them nice and comforted and calm. Also, don't forget to check the description box below after you're done watching this video because I will have the links to not only my sensory bottles but everything else that I can find links for down there. That way you guys can and find them easily. This next activity is one of my favorites and it involves a lot of different textures. This is a group of sensory bags that I turned into a sensory floor path. So you can make sensory bags and just have your little ones play with those on their own. You can tape them to a kitchen cabinet or the floor, or you can just give them to them just on the floor or in their high chair. I decided to create a sensory path that my little one could either crawl on or walk on and feel the different textures. So for for this activity, I just used, again, things that I already had here at home. I used cotton balls, water beads, some aloe gel with food coloring and glitter, just like I did in the sensory bottles, only without the glue. And then the last one was just a strip of bubble wrap. Again, you can be as creative as you want to with this. I do recommend double bagging any types of liquid materials that you have, just in case you get any spills or leakage. But this is super fun, super easy, and you can be so creative creative with it. I especially loved using the bubble wrap because not only is it a very unique texture, especially on the bottom of her feet, but it also makes a sound when she steps on it. And that just adds a whole new element to sensory play. Also, as you can see, my little one is very interested as to what I'm doing. So this is a great opportunity for us as parents to just explain what we are doing as we're doing it. Again, we're just increasing that language and just exposing them to new vocabulary. So as I mentioned earlier, sensory play is open-ended. So my little one decided to use her hands more so than walk on this, like an actual floor pathway. And that is absolutely okay. She is still exploring and discovering and just really learning about all of the different textures. So I just wanted to point that out because a lot of times kids may use something differently and that is absolutely okay. So this next activity is great for fine motor skill development. So all it is is clear contact paper or something similar. It doesn't have to be that brand. Some painter's tape and then any art materials that you have in your home or just any materials. You can cut up strips of tissue paper. You can use anything and everything that you want to to have your little ones stick onto this contact paper. So you want the sticky side to be facing out. That way materials will stick onto it and then just use painter's tape to tape this up onto the wall or onto the floor and let your kids just go to town. So our little one we found enjoyed taking things off of it more than she liked putting things on it. So that is what we did the majority of the time.
Another very simple activity that you can use in your home with your kids is this pom-pom drop. So we had this leftover paper towel roll and the painter's tape. I just taped this to the wall. You can use multiple and create like a little obstacle course for your pom-poms, but we just had the one, so I just taped it to the wall and put this bowl underneath, and then my sweet girl was able to drop the pom-poms from the top and see how they were able to come out of the bottom and fall into the bowl. This is a great activity for your little ones to learn about cause and effect, and it is super duper easy. Another great activity to start with kids from a young age is lacing. This is wonderful for fine motor development. And although my little one did not pick this up quite yet, we are gonna continue to work on this because it is something that is wonderful as a pre-writing skill. And by the time they get to pre-K or preschool, those fine motor developmental skills that they have been practicing at home will really pay off when they start to learn to write. So we just used cut up smoothie straws that we had here at home and some pipe cleaners to practice lacing but as you can see she pretty much was just putting them in the bowl and dumping them out and then putting them in and then dumping them out again but these metal bowls in particular actually worked out really well for this activity because when she dropped the straws in they make a clinking sound and of course, I always try to follow my sweet girl's lead. So what are her needs? What is she enjoying? I noticed that she was really liking the bowls, so I grabbed another one, and then you will see she also combined some of the activities that we were doing. So for this activity, I wanted to share with you that we just reused the pom-poms and the vegetable tray for a new activity. So you don't need to go and spend a ton of money. Use what you already have. So as you can see, she is just scooping and transitioning. You can use this for color sorting, sorting by size. The possibilities are endless. And last but not least, we did an animal tape rescue. Again, you can use this for any types of figurines or toys your child already has. We just used painter's tape on the backside of a cookie sheet to tape down some of her farm animals. And by her having to pull the tape off and rescue the animals, she is experiencing the sound of the tape, the tug or pull of the tape on the cookie sheet, and it just gives her a whole different view of something to do with something she already has. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know which activities you plan on doing with your little ones down in the comments below. I know we are all still at home, so hopefully we can just make the time pass a little bit more quickly by doing some fun activities with our little ones. Thanks so much again and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.